I've got here a few books about fractals. They contain all of the usual suspects, but also a few of the more unknown fractals. Fractals are these strange creatures that exist between dimensions. There are lots of different kinds of fractals, and some exist all around us. The ones in nature are often made by the same natural process occurring at multiple scales, such as erosion causing the coastline of a country to have a fractal nature to it, where there is detail at every scale. With a non-fractal shape such as a circle, if you zoom in enough it will appear as a straight line, but with a fractal, no matter how much you zoom in, there will be continuous complexity there. Some fractals are the boundaries of sets in the complex plane, and others are constructed by replacing segments of a line with a self-similar fragment. These books before me show off some of the fractals like this that have been named or studied, but I don't think there's any limit to the number of such fractals that can exist, so what we'll look at here is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm starting with Mandelbrot's The Fractal Geometry of Nature from 1983. The book has this gold design on the front, but I have no idea what you would call this, so let's see if we can find out inside. The first page that has something similar is this one, where it calls it a monkey's tree. This is the generator here. It starts with this wave shape, which is the most basic unit that is repeated over and over again, but in different orientations. This monkey's tree diagram has done a few iterations and smoothed it out a bit. It's also seemingly dipped it in like a black ink with the black extending into all of the crevices that it will reach, it has a fractal dimension of 1.8687. Dimensions between 1 and 2 mean it's between a line and a filled in shape, and a higher fractional dimension will represent something that we see as being rougher or more fractally than something with a lower dimension. With a slightly different wave formation and rounding it off, we get what looks like the front cover. And again a slightly different one gives us this complicated mess, which has again been kind of dipped in ink, allowing us to see where we could walk, say if we were walking on the black region. Now these last two examples that I've just shown are super interesting, because if you look at the fractal dimension, it's actually two. And earlier I said that fractals exist between dimensions, you know, between one and two and three in those fractional spaces. But these last two examples are actually space filling curves. They are so good at spreading out that if you take them to their limit they will actually completely fill the space. A space filling curve could be considered a mapping from a lower dimensional space to a higher dimensional space. These shapes are a map that you could give to a one dimensional line to teach it how to become a two dimensional square. In the book, Mandelbrot refers to this as a piano curve because Giuseppe Piano in 1900 was the first one to describe such a curve. The original one shown here is kind of a figure eight shape. You can see its dimension is two, meaning that it will fill the plane. These are some of the iterations here that have been rotated 45 degrees and the corners have actually been cut off as to show the progression of the curve. Flicking to the next page, we have this interesting example where the outline of this shape is called a Gosper Island. It isn't a plane filling curve, its dimension is only 1.12, so it's much closer to a line than it is to being able to fill the plane, but the inside is filled with a different pattern, something called the Piano Gosper Curve, which is space filling and has a dimension of 2. The internal shape that this one gives allows you to trace things that look like rivers and river networks on top of it. Space filling curves are really fascinating. They work in 2D but also in 3D. You can have a 3D space filling curve that reaches every single point through some iterative manner. It kind of makes me wonder what is reality if not a 3D space filling curve that particles move along. If such a curve really does reach every point in space, then is there this invisible weave to the space around us? That's just a random spitball, but let's keep going. This page introduces something called dragons. This is the Harter Heightway dragon, made by this generator, which continuously gets rotated by 90 degrees. You can actually make this dragon out of paper. You just fold a strip in half and you keep folding, then when you unfold it, each unfolding layer will naturally rotate 90 degrees from the last one, and you will get the dragon shape. Here is a twin dragon, 
and also a twin dragon river. You can also make a twin dragon skin. The basic cock snowflake is made by a generator like this, where the angle between these lines is 120 degrees. If you adjust that angle, however, you get some different looking shapes that don't look like snowflakes at all. This one's made by a very tight angle and looks like a forest of trees. I found this very excellent resource at fractalcurves.com made by Jeffrey Ventrella. He's written an online book describing all kinds of fractal curves, many of which he's discovered himself, but also made this interactive component. We can explore here various families of fractal curves. G11 is referring to being on a square grid where 1,1 is the point that you're traveling to in the generator of this fractal. This most basic one gives us the dragon from before. Making just a minor change to this generator by flipping the direction of the steps, you get a completely different curve, the polya curve, which is space filling and eventually traces out a solid triangle. Here's one called the brain filler, and one unfortunately and perhaps unfairly named the ugly 10. This might just be Ventrilla's nickname for it though. Families with the E in front mean that they're constructed on a triangular grid. This one, the Tur Dragon, is made by a zigzag of three steps, and every other fractal shape in this family takes three steps along this triangular lattice, just in a different order and perhaps with some being flipped or rotated. And that makes a huge difference to the resulting shape. Here's that original piano curve being constructed, both with straight lines and with rounded off corners. This family here, E30, are some of the more complicated generators, and show various other versions of the things that we saw in the Mandelbrot book if you were to make your generator slightly different. A shout out to the frayed carpet, the scroll, and the avoid brain. This is the cantor dust made by keeping only the end thirds of each line, but these are the cantor curtains made by a similar way, just tracing it out. And this page claims that we can see the cantor's dust pattern in Saturn's rings, that the rings consist of circles with a radius corresponding to the distance from some origin to a point in the Cantor dust. It also seems that there are similar patterns in the spectra of molecules. Here are some fractal umbrella trees and fractal canopies. Apparently Feynman said that fractal trees made it possible for him to visualize and model the jets that arise when particles collide head-on at very high energy, and the idea is explored in reports from CERN. There's a shout out here to the On Growth and Form book, saying that just like in 1917 when Thompson mapped the skulls of different species of fish onto each other with continuous and smooth transformations, these fractal trees can also be mapped onto each other with similar transformations. Stacking circles between each other like this is called Apollyon Packing. This book is a library book, I wouldn't recommend trying to buy it for yourself because it's probably really expensive, but your local university library might have one. A life hack I found is that you don't have to be a university student to hire books out from a university library. Often you can sign up with a community account, it might cost a little bit of money, but that's how I'm able to get all of these really old and rare books. This one is unfortunately falling apart, and so I'm trying to touch it as little as possible. This next book, A Random Walk Through Fractal Dimensions, gives some examples of fractals in places that you might not expect. Some are mundane and some are more interesting. Here's the fractal dimension of some grains of PVC powder and then of a rubber crumb. With a slightly higher fractal dimension than those, we have the outline of a lake and the outline of leaves. Here we have a maple leaf and here there's a comment saying that two oak leaves from the same oak tree appear to have essentially the same fractal structure. So checking the fractal dimension of a leaf might help you figure out which tree it's come from. This leaf from a different oak tree has a different fractal structure. And here's a plot showing the fractal dimension of a cancerous growth. You can see how the roughness of the perimeter changes around these cells that are invading the normal tissue. Even holes have a fractal structure. This is the profile of a hole found by taking a slice through a meteorite. You can also find fractals in an array of random numbers. This is especially useful if you want to simulate fractal structures. 
This here is simulating the structure of a paint film containing 10% of some pigment. And what they've done is to take a random array of numbers and to mark every nine with a black square. And you could count the frequency of differently sized patches of black dots in this picture, giving you a fractal dimension. Let me know your favorite fractal down in the comments, especially if you've been able to come up with one yourself. Thanks for watching.